I'm Lisa with creativecanines.blogspot.com and I'm here to give you a little information about our upcoming Copic instructional classes here on Simply Scrapping and Crafts. I'm going to go through the different supplies that we need and a little bit of instruction to get you started so that you're feeling comfortable for the first class. The first thing that you're going to need is at least two to three Copic markers. I'm going to explain something to you real quick. Here's what you need to do. They need to be in the same color family. And what I mean by that is there's a bunch of different color families in Copic markers. I'm going to go over the one right now. It's earth tones, which are E's. Okay. What you need to do is to know if they are in order and that they will blend well together is to look at the first number. And I have here E33, E35, and E37. I know they're going to blend well together because they all start with the first number of three. And I know for sure they're going to go well together because the second numbers are two to three apart from each other. 33, 35, 37. So you need to have at least two to three Copic markers that you know will blend. The other thing I'd like you to get, and you can get this either on the Copic website or the I Like Markers blog, is a Copic marker hand color chart. This will give you an idea of all the different color families and the different orders for them. Once again, if you have any questions, just post on the Copic tutorial site on Simply Scrapping and Crafts and I will answer your question. The second thing you need is you need to have the right kind of paper the paper I like to use is by Nina, and this is what it looks like, this package. <laughs> I know when I was first starting to look at, looking for the package was helpful. It's called Classic Crest. I use Solar White. It's smooth. You can find this a lot of online retailers, but you can also get it at local places. For example, if you have an Expedex in town, that's where I purchase mine. Other papers work. You can get the One Sheet Wonder by Couture Cardstock. Gina K has some good varieties. PTI has some good stuff. Those are all examples of paper that you can get, but you need to have the right kind of paper or you're going to be incredibly frustrated. The other thing you need to get is if you are actually stamping your image, you need to get the right kind of ink. Memento works the best, and I use the Tuxedo Black. Any dye ink will work. Do not use Stazon. Stazon will ruin your Copic markers. Um, Versifying will smear. Anything that's not a dye ink will smear, so you need a dye ink. Most people who use a Copics and do stamping prefer the Memento. If you are not going to use a stamp, or you're going to use a digital stamp, like you've seen in some of my videos, you need to either have a, a color printer an inkjet printer that doesn't smear, and you'll know that as soon as you put your marker on the on your image and the lines, the black lines start to bleed, you'll know that that's not going to work for you. If that's what you have, you can always take it to a copy center and copy it. Or if you have a laser printer, that's perfect. I actually bought a real cheap laser printer to do all my digital images. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to make, and as silly as this looks, it's going to be helpful for you with shading, is I want you to make in the middle a smiley face representing the sun, and about every quarter of an inch, I want you to draw a line with a sharpie on a piece of acetate or transparency. And it needs to be at least about five by seven, and we're going to use that in order to help us determine the light source. If you're going to use stamps, Please don't do anything really detailed. I love house mouse stamps. Love them. Look at the back side of it. The detail on these are phenomenal and they're incredibly frustrating to color with your Copic markers. Can totally be done though. And I will definitely show you how to do that. When you're gonna start off, you need to start with something simple. Something simple like an image like this. Some of the dollar stamps at Michael's are perfect for this. And Joanne's has some too. Okay. You can see how simple the stamp is. You need something very simple. 
Here's a little ice cream cone that's also simple. Or a squirrel. You want something simple that has a lot of open space without a lot of line, without a lot of detail. The same goes for your digital images. What we're going to do, we're going to start off next week. I'm hoping that we can all use the same image in order to color with so that we have an idea for doing things right. I have some tutorials, video tutorials that are going to go up based upon how to determine the light source. So once again, the things that you need for class next week. At least two Copic markers within the same color family. Your Copic marker chart, your transparency to determine light source, and you need to make that. Don't add any rhinestones or anything, it, it won't work for you, <laughs> although cute. <laughs> you need to have ink if you're gonna use stamps, or you need to have a way to be able to print off images digitally that aren't gonna smear or mess up your markers. And the one thing that you need more than anything, and wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, here it is, you need patience. Because it's not, it's not that Copic markers are difficult, it's that you need to keep your patience and to have some faith in yourself and you can get it done. The shading can be a little difficult. It's okay. Everyone goes through it. There's a learning curve. You can do it. Okay. Look into my eyes. You can do it. If you've done it before and you failed or you haven't opened your markers, open them up. You can do it this time. I guarantee it. And if you're having a hard time, hey, just shoot me a question over on the discussion side at Simply Scrapping and Crafts on the, the Copic tutorial, and I will answer them for you. Take care, have a wonderful evening, and I'm so excited to get working with you. This is Lisa, checking out with you again at creativecanines.blogspot.com.